All right, we're going to talk about skin color. As you know, there are many variations in skin color in the human population. Um, a lot of bias exists about this. Um, so one thing I love teaching is the biology underneath this really cool diversity. Um, and what I want to start with is how much diversity really exists. So this is a really cool um, artist who tries to find individuals with different skin tones and match their skin tone to a background color. So you can see here just the amazing diversity, um, right? We're not white and black. Um, we are a huge variety of skin color and the biology behind it is really cool. Um, we will focus primarily on melanin, but there are other components that determine skin color uh, we'll get into a, a little bit as well. Okay, so to remind you of the layers of the skin, um, because we're going to dive into them. Um, let's look at the epidermis. So remember the epidermis is that top layer of the skin made of stratified squamous epithelium. All of this tissue is stratified squamous epithelium. And then the bottom layer of that is the stratum basale. It's this very bottom layer, single layer of cells, just above the dermis. This is where mitosis is going on to allow cells, the skin to grow and regenerate. Um, this is also the layer where there's going to be melanocytes. This is a melanocyte here. And melanin. Most of what you see here um, is melanin. Melanin is the pigment. Um, yeah. So let's see this in a, what this kind of looks like here. In an individual with um, darker skin, there is um, a lot of melanin. The number of melanocytes actually doesn't differ between these two individuals, but it's the melanin amount and type differs. So it's what the melanocytes do. Um, this term melanized is something you'll see. So melanized cells, melanized keratinocytes. Keratinocytes are those cells. This is primarily what you're seeing along the deep, um, this individual skin is melanized keratinocytes. This means cells that are covered with melanin, protected um, from the sun by melanin. And in this individual over here, although there still be melanocytes, you don't see many me mel melanized cells. Um, so individuals with light skin are more susceptible to sun damage. Let's zoom in to what's going on like within this, this region. So if we zoom in to a layer into this stratum basale, this is where we're zoomed in. Here is a melanocyte. All humans are actually different shades of, of brown with this exception of um, albino people, albinism. So we're all tinted with melanin. Um, but there's many different shades. So melanin can be reddish brown or brownish black or just brown. There's many different types. And that's one thing that determines or influences different skin color. Um, we can also differ in how much mel melanin our melanosomes produce. So melan melanosomes are the cells they are producing pigment and packaging them um, into melanosomes. This type of vesicular transport, what do you think it's called? This is exocytosis. So exocytosis of melanosomes is occurring. Melanosomes are vessels full of mel melanin. So individual can vary in how much um, melanin and melanosomes are produced and therefore how much 
protection there is from the sun, as well as how dark the skin would look because that melanin has a dark color. Um, you can see these melanosomes kind of traveling up all these little guys too, and they are protecting the keratinocytes around here. Um, one other pigment that's shown here is keratin is kind of a, a yellowish pigment found in carrots. That's another pigment that's present in our um, skin that influences cell color. If you want to know, um, this is a cool video um, kind of showing this idea of types of melanin, amount of melanin, a number of melanosomes being the primary influencers of skin color. Um, this is a really nice video you can watch on your own. Um, otherwise, I'm going to actually zoom in now. It's kind of a different view of a keratinocyte. So this is a keratinocyte that might be next door or nearby. A melanocyte is somewhere around here. This was releasing vesicles. And now those vesicles are providing a little sun hat for this nearby keratinocyte. This is a melanized keratinocyte. A melanized keratinocyte, singular in this case, because it's one nucleus, um, is protected from the sun. It's because wearing a sun hat. This is helpful for UV protection, right? The sun um, has UV rays and this UV ray can damage DNA. So that's what's happening here in this image. Often that's not a problem. Our cells regenerate, um, our skin cells do a lot, but this can cause skin cancer, right? So a different type of skin cancer that um, melanin is protective against. Okay, so there's differences between different individuals in skin color based on right the type of melanin, amount of melanin, and the number of mel melanosomes that those melanocytes produce. Um, but also the amount of melanin can vary based on UV exposure. And you know this because you've been outside in the summer. Um, UV light can increase melanin production. You don't need to know the details here, but it's pretty cool. Um, briefly, UV light is stimulating this, right? It's a stimulus. Um, and that's going to increase actually a hormone called mel melanocyte stimulating hormone, MSH. Um, this hormone is going to trigger increase in the production of melanin by these melanocytes. Makes a lot of sense, right? Um, so more melanin is produced, we have further protection. This happens to us regardless of our skin color. We have an increase in kind of darkness over the summer um, or if we're in the sun. Um, and again, what color you get is going to depend on how much sun exposure, but also the type of melanin that you produce in your body. Um, okay, note that also a tan does indicate UV exposure, which can indicate DNA damage. So although it's protective, it also indicates that your son has already been exposed to UV light and there possibly is, it doesn't indicate cancer, but it can indicate um, possible UV damage. Again, oftentimes your body has ways of um, addressing that, that you'll you're, be okay. So kind of summary here, um, the main component that contributes to kind of this dark skin versus light skin is um, not the number of melanocytes. Here in this image, there's one melanocyte in either case, but the amount of melanin, here this is a melanocyte, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that is a melanosome, and the the melanin, both type and amount. With less being in this individual, as well as um, fewer of, of the substance. Okay, the other factor that can influence skin color, though I already mentioned carotene. Carotene is kind of a yellow-orange pigment found in carrots. Um, this shows up a little bit more in individuals who have light skin already, but it can influence skin color in anyone. Um, blood vessels 
right? So blood flow, again, um, it's maybe more obvious in light-skinned individuals, becomes even more prominent with exercise or allergies or blushing, um, the opposite people with anemia or low blood pressure, but influences skin color, regardless of what that existing color was already. Um, so that's some of the other other factors.